Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here coming at you with another quick video for EVE Echoes. This time around I'm doing something a little bit different and discussing the details of the recent patch to land. Now normally during a beta I wouldn't really like focus on covering details of a patch, simply because patches during beta tend to be fairly frequent and they tend to be fairly minor. That said, this particular patch was quite large and I'm already getting questions regarding it so I thought I would sit down, record this video and push it out ahead of time. I do apologise, I know I've said to some people in the comments sections um, that I've got a video on the Venture and Venture 3 fitting that also covers how to like progress your skills, what kind of order you should be looking at your skill progression for in mining um, and I also mentioned I've got a video on drones and on the markets coming. Um, I do apologise, those videos are done, they're uploaded, they're ready to go, um, but I thought I would push this one out ahead of time just because it's, it's relevant news. So anyway, with all that said and done, let's jump right in and talk about this patch. This isn't going to be a full patch notes video, I will put a link to the patch notes in the description if you want to have a full look, but there are a couple of things I just wanted to point out early because I'm already being asked. Now first things first, there has been a massive change to ships that are tier 3 or higher. Now if I go into the ship tree, what I mean by tier 3, I don't mean like a Thrasher 3 or something crazy like that. You see on the left hand side here, you've got the 1, you've got the 2, you've got the 3. This means that in the case of like Minmatar here, the Reaper is a te uh, tier 1, and the Slasher is tier 2, as is the Rifter. Tier 3 becomes things like the Probe, um, and the Breacher, and of course, our Thrasher. So let's jump out and have a look at fitting and you'll see what's happened here. Now straight away you should spot that I, the, the standard basic thrasher has gone from having two low slots to having four. In addition to the four low slots, it's also got a medium slot now. now. I've had people asking what this means, how you should now outfit your thrasher. Go and watch the uh, tanking video I did that's all about how you fit your ships and you'll get a basic idea, but for a more in-depth look I thought I'd showcase a couple of mine very, very quickly as to what this now means. So here with the Thrasher, what I had before was a Mark V gyro stabilizer and a Mark III small shield booster. That is basically because this is a ship that gets uh, buffs to its shields. If we have a look in here, you'll see as we come down here, for every level in Destroyer Command, I get plus 5% shield. So shield is what I want to focus on with this. As such, those are the two low slots that I had before, the Mark, uh, the Mark III small shield booster um, and a gyro stabilizer just to up the projectile turret damage. But now that I've got two additional slots, I can also shove in a reactive shield hardener. Now I've talked about uh, in other videos things like uh, the different resistances that shields would have. Most shields, um, especially if you have a look at a Mimitar Thrasher here, we, we scroll down, you see that a shield on this ship um, is 50% resistant to uh, explosive and 40% to kinetic. When it comes to electromagnetic and thermal, they're 0% and 20% uh, respectively. Not much in the way of resistances there. The Mark V reactive shield hardener, however, as it says here, they utilize advanced equilibrium force field technology, enabling them to adapt to incoming damage types and change their resistance characteristics accordingly. Only one of this module can be fitted at a time. That now means that if I'm going up against someone who is using uh, Amar lasers, I can whack that reactive shield hardener and suddenly my resistances are going to change to be much more resistant to thermal and uh, electromagnetic instead. That just means this is that little bit more useful for both PvE ratting and PvP. I then also have the afterburner here which allows me just to approach a target that little bit quicker and finally in the medium slot I've gone for a Mark III warp disruptor just so that I can find other ships that are uh, like you know just out maybe doing some PvE I can lock them into position stop them from warping away and blow them up. It's not going to help me against the Venture which has a much uh, a much more stable uh, much more stable warp core. Uh, watch my video on uh, E-War uh, e modules and that'll explain all of that. But basically what this now means is that the standard Minmatar Thrasher has actually become really quite scary. This makes it much more stable. My defense here has gone all the way up to 3774 um, and that's just as a basic tier 3 uh, destroyer. This means that with a full fitting like this, this is now a really dangerous ship. It's actually a lot more survivable than it was before. Rather than just being an alpha strike and then I needed to pull out of system to recharge everything, now I can actually stay around a little bit longer. And what does that mean for the uh, the Thrasher 2? Well, let's jump into my ship hangar, pull out the Thrasher 2, and we'll have a little look at that. Because the Thrasher 2, I'll be honest, is still by far my favourite ship in my little fleet. 
So let's have a look at this one, open up the fitting, and you'll see I've got a whopping 305.21 DPS now. This is thanks to me upgrading to Mark 7 200mm autocannons. Whoa, -ho -ho -ho. having a lot of fun with these. The low slots, uh, sorry, the medium slots, instead of just the small energy Nosferatu, which I can use to power my shield boosters and stuff, um, I now also have the Mark III Warp Disruptor, again, just for locking things down. And then here in the low slots, again, rather than just the shield booster and the gyro stabilizer, I've now added a reactive shield hardener, and I've reacted a sm added a small shield extender. This now means, in basic terms, if you look at my shield there of 1684, I can whack it with that reactive shield hardener to change its resistances. I can also pop on a small shield extender, and you'll see here that this thing whacks on an additional 232 hit points to my shield, which means when I get out into combat, I can whack on my small energy Nosferatu to stop the, uh, to drain some of their capacitor, along with uh, the warp disruptor locking them into position. I can then run all of those three shield modules to make myself incredibly survivable while hitting them with 300 odd DPS, you know, uh, DPS per second, 305.21 DPS. That is a hefty amount of damage to be dealing to someone. In my rigs, I am slowly working on my rigs. They're so expensive and I'm doing so many other things with my ISK. I don't have chance to really sit down and just focus on one thing. Core defense charge, uh, I, I can't remember that. Core defense charge, the, the, the something other. The core defense charge, economizer, that's the word, which increases my shield booster amounts, um, along with the projectile collision accelerator, just to up my t uh, projectile turret DPS. That to me is, a, that's a huge change now. The uh, My Thrasher 2 has become so much more survivable thanks to the additional two uh, low slots and that additional medium slot means that it's actually that little bit more dangerous in PvP in that I can lock someone down. Now this does affect almost every ship that is tier 3 or higher. So if I look at this here, you can see the Magnate. That is a tier 3 ship, or tech level 3 is what I should say, as is the Probe, and the Imacus High Mobility and the Algos, the Thrasher, all of these are affected by this. Now what's basically happened is they've gone back over, they've added low slots, they've added medium slots, and in some cases, well, and they've upped the amount of capacitor and power grid on a lot of these ships as well. If we look at the Magnate, you can see here this now has an additional medium slot and an additional low slot. It's gone from zero medium and two low to three low and one medium. That just means it's a little bit more survivable and a little bit more useful. And that's only a frigate. That's not even a destroyer. If we come across to then things like the Probe, again, you'll see here that's got an, uh, an additional medium slot and it's got low slots now as well, which makes a big difference to it. You can do so much more with these. My Talwar Trainer. That again, two medium slots up from having only one, three low slots up from only having two. It's just a straight up boost on all of these. Same even with the Stabber, that's got an additional medium slot and two additional low slots. It's gone from two low slots up to four, which makes it a very survivable ship now. And there is a video coming soon on the Stabber. Now, I've mentioned I've got a video coming for the Venture and the Venture 3. Obviously, they're not going to mention one of the new changes that's happened to this patch as well, which is that now not only does the Venture 3 have an additional low slot and an additional medium slot, going from 2 up to 3 and 1 up to 2 accordingly, but it now also has a stealth device reactivate delay and a decloak lock delay reduction. So it uh, you can reactivate your stealth devices and your, uh, your, uh, your stealth cloaks, um, you can reactivate those faster and you can lock onto something faster as you come out of it. That's a really useful thing if you're using uh, if you're using cloaking devices on a Venture 3, which actually now I would suggest is something you might want to do. So before you watch that Venture 3 video, um, just, just bear that in mind, that cloaking is now something you might want to add to that. The Algos as well is the one that I cover in the drone video. That now has two additional low slots and an additional medium slot, so you may want to add extra things than just what I suggest in that video. And this is a big change. It's across the board. It's not just Minmatar, it's all ships. Basically, if it's tier, uh, tech level 3 or higher, it's probably had a big boost to its capacitor and power grid and has additional low and medium slots. Now, one of the other changes I just want to mention, it doesn't really affect anyone at this point in time, but boy, does it excite me. My favourite ship in EVE has always been the Kane, that is, the Hurricane. Now, confusingly, this was recently in EVE Echoes, it was made into a missile boat. I mentioned it in one of my previous uh, videos. It's, it's a missile boat, and that's annoying for me, because obviously I'm skilling into small projectile turrets for my frigates and my destroyers, and for my stabber. 
Because my stabber gets additional bonuses for medium projectile turret operation, um, I've been skilling into medium projectile turrets. I don't want to then have to get my favourite ship, the Hurricane, and have to completely skill into a whole new tech tree of, uh, of missiles. I don't want to have to do that. Now, I can just focus on medium projectile turrets because they fixed it and now the Hurricane works with advanced medium projectile turret operation to get additional bonuses to those. The Hurricane is back to being a turret ship. I know that doesn't really affect most of us. Um, if I if I open my skills, you'll see I am still a long way off level eight. And then of course I will still have to build or, or buy um, a hurricane. You know, not not many people can use a hurricane just yet. And I've still got to get all the way up here to to the next tech level to get the tech eight ships. Just oh, I'm so glad that when I get there, it's actually going to make sense now. Now, as I said, I will put a full link to the uh, to the patch notes. Um, in the description below, so I do recommend going and checking those out, um, just because it, it's worth understanding what has actually changed, um, just so you can see if there's anything that I've missed, anything of your favourite ships, what they, uh, what, the, what those have changed to. So do go and check it out. But basically, I just wanted to cover here the Thrasher, the Thrasher Two, uh, the Venture, and just have a look at what has changed in regards to those. So. People asking me, you know, what would you recommend putting in those additional slots? Go watch my. Uh, Go watch my video on how to outfit your ships in regards to tanking and watch my gunnery video. You'll see that now ultimately, uh, and the E-War video, sorry, the E-War video is important there too. You'll see now that you can add in additional medium slots, which is the E-War video, and the tanking stuff is part of the low slot video. Um, so you'll see that if you're using a shield, uh, shield tanking ship, you might want to start adding extra shield boosts into the low into the low slots. Um, and if you are going for an armor tanking ship, you may want to start adding more armor into your low slots. Anyway, that really does just wrap things up for what I wanted to say in this video. It's a little bit longer than I was intending it to be, but there we go. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you think this is a cool patch, I certainly do. To me, this makes uh, like the frigates and destroyers so much better um, and much more survivable, which is important with some of those uh, encounters out there where things get pretty hairy. You wait until you see my drone video. Oh boy. <laughs> but yeah, let me know your thoughts on this patch in the comment section below. Do subscribe. As I said, I've got a drones video on the way. There's a Venture, a Venture and Venture 3 fitting video that discusses the skill progression for learning mining. Um, there is also a video on markets and trade, and I'm working on a video for missiles as well. So that is all still to come. Subscribe if that sounds exciting, or if you just want more Evecos content, that is on its way. Thank you ever so much for watching, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.